Hey there. Okay, so this is like the third time I start to record this and I thought it was going to be quickie and it's not so much. Um, but that's okay. This is not everything gem. This is my vlog and um, as you know, I'm going to talk to you about um, stuff that's going on with my health. So we're going to talk about what happened over at the jacuzzi today. Oh, I thought that was kind of weird. And we're also going to talk about nipple sparing and plastic surgeons and stuff like that. So um, anyway, I was over at the jacuzzi at 9 o'clock and um, there were some young people there and they were smoking and we're in a non-smoking um, in a non-smoking place, for lack of a better word. So, um, I got there, you know, I just did my thing, got in the jacuzzi and stayed on my bone like I usually do, or try to relax a little bit. And they were smoking at first, but then they put it out and they jumped in the pool for a while. Later on, they came back and it's kind of funny because, um, it was, you know, uh, I knew what time I was going to get out and I started to get out and dry myself off. And the guy said, one of the guys said, hey, you know, if our smoking is bothering you, we'll be happy to um, put out our cigarettes. And I was like, mm, well, I said I was really just getting up to dry off anyway. And he said, no, really, it's not a problem. I said, well, I would definitely tell you if it was a problem, but um, I'm not really worried about it because I'm going to be leaving. And so he's like, oh, okay. Kind of pressed the issue a little bit, but whatever. So... Um, then like afterwards or a few minutes later, I said, but you know what? I said, um, I'm not supposed to be around people that smoke or, you know, any smoke. And they said, well, why is that? And I said, well, I'm going to be having surgery soon. And they're like, oh, so they're sitting there smoking away. And they said, um, what kind of surgery are you having? And I said, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And then I'll, they look at each other and there's this look comes over their face. I said, and please don't say sorry. And um, <laughs> they put out their cigarettes. It's kind of funny. Um, and then we started a conversation. And uh, it was really cool. They really, they really seemed to very, be very nice. And I was telling them about my campaign and stuff. And um, they were saying how they'd be willing to help me. One of the guys goes, I would rather help you any day than to um, help some of these churches that come around here trying to sell us cookies or whatever. So that's pretty cool. And I hope I do see them again soon. Um, and um, it's just nice to um, be able to engage with younger people and stuff like that and tell them about um, what, it, what it's like to be going through um, this experience. Uh, I think it's kind of funny when people say to me, Oh, you're so positive. It's not even, I don't know, I, I don't really see it like that. I mean, I try to keep things, you know, um, positive in a way, but I am i don't know how I would survive if I um, did that any other way. So anyway, um, I had uh, this, last week I got my plastic surgeon approved and I got an authorization for a doctor by the name of Dr. Duncan Miles, and he is here in Redlands. Um, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, I had to, in order to have my surgery, which was originally scheduled for um, June 9th, um, I had to have a plastic surgeon because they're gonna do it all at once. So they're gonna go in and remove the, the cancer and then they're gonna go ahead and replace my implants. So they're gonna be doing replacing both implants. Now, um, what I had to decide on was if I wanted to have a, a unilateral mastectomy or you know if I wanted to get rid of both my boobs. So um, I went to this one plastic surgeon and he was at Loma Linda I don't remember his name right now. It might be Kim or Dr. Kim or something like that, but I probably shouldn't say that in the video. But anyway, so I went to go visit him and we had the conversation and he actually was telling me that he was suggested that I do both of them. And um, he went on to tell me that the way he was gonna do it, and I'm gonna show you here how the cuts are. I mean, I don't know if you've seen them before, but basically they go in and gut your boob. That's basically what happens. So what he was going to do, I'm sorry, let's sit up here for a second. 
and he's gonna, they cut across here and they go like around the nipple and then they go all the way over here depending on, on what all they have to remove. So I thought, hold on, let me adjust this just a, just a smidge. Okay. So I thought, hmm, all right. Um, I said, well, I um, do not want to lose my nipple. And I had already talked to my oncologist about that. And she said that based on what she knew that um, the tumors weren't that close to my nipple. So she thought that sparing my nipple was, you know, Re a reasonable request at that. Um, so I continue to talk to the plastic surgeon about that and he says, look, he said, I can try to do that. However, you might wake up one day and open your bandages and your nipple might have fallen off. So in my mind, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I mean, I have this visual of me opening this ACE bandage and there's this dried up raisin looking thing sitting in that I mean and it's my nipple and then kind of just like my rotting flesh on the front of my boob not a good visual I was very uncomfortable with that idea um, just the fact that he would would describe it like that I think was just I think it was uh, very insensitive I think it was highly insensitive and very offensive um, I think that he didn't take my feelings into consideration do I think bedside manner is important? Yes, I really do. We're talking about my my body. We're talking about my life. And um, he thinks that it's okay for him to have that kind of an attitude. I think that's, that's completely wrong. And I have come across so many doctors that, I mean, I don't know if like they had a bad day or if I just happened to catch them on a bad day, but they just seem so insensitive. Um, this nurse that I was talking to she said you know maybe you should just bypass that and just think wow does he have you know a great skill or maybe he's like a great surgeon he just have has horrible bedside manner well here's the thing everything in life starts and ends in the mind therefore if I'm gonna go into surgery and I'm not gonna be feeling hundred percent comfortable with this person I don't think that my healing process is going to go that well. I'm not going to feel good about the situation. If he can't offer me comfort at that level, then I'm not sure where I'm supposed to find comfort in my plastic surgery. So um, I also had asked him, you know, why he thought he couldn't spare that nipple. And he says what happens is you know, basically when they gut it, they take out all the tissue and everything. There's really no circulation to the skin. And since I'm, I'm not very thick up here, and I have a lot of tissue um, that um, the circulation, he felt that the circulation would definitely be compromised. He said he would do everything that he could. However, he really couldn't assure me that that was going to happen. He um, also was, I mean, typically what they do, I guess, um, and I, I had looked at some of the brochures and stuff, but a lot of times what they will do is they'll take out like patches of skin, like off of your back, back over here somewhere, at, over here. <laughs> <laughs> over here somewhere and um, or, or in your stomach they'll do like this like mini tummy tuck and they'll use that um, tissue um, to go ahead and create um, I guess you know like put the tissue between your skin and the implant so you're not just feeling the implant and the, and the skin on top so um, I apparently don't have enough fat in um, my stomach um, to do that with um, I don't know, they, I just, they just don't take it off my fat legs, but um, I don't have enough fat in my stomach, so they were going to take some off of a cadaver. Oh, wait, but that's later on. Anyway, we're talking about the first plastic surgeon. So, anyway, um, yeah, he, he just had a really weird attitude about it, and he was all for the double, and I asked him, I said, well... I mean, if we're talking about circulation one side, I know like if my right leg gets hurt, my left leg will compensate. So my left leg's going to work harder. Um, so I was like, that being said, I'm just thinking if I get like my, uh, the mastectomy on my right side and I keep, keep my left breast, that I would still have better circulation than if I totally gutted my complete, completely gutted my chest. I mean, to me, that makes sense. Uh, apparently to him it really doesn't make that much sense when I ask him what I can do to um, you know increase my circulation or make sure I have better circul circulation he said don't smoke I said well I don't smoke and he's like okay then <laughs> I was like wow he, what an idiot you know what I mean so um, uh, that being said again I, I 
went back to my oncologist and I said, you know, I'm, I'm really not comfortable with him. I, I need to see another plastic surgeon. You know, I, want, um, I said, I don't want to have that kind of a cut done. I even asked about a lumpectomy. Um, and so we talked about it a little bit more and she explained to me that a lumpectomy was probably not an option for me as far as she could see. She said that, you know, I have three different lumps big one, this main one, and then I have these other two little lumps. Um, and that they consider, like if I connected the dots, everything between that space they consider to be cancerous. So they would want to remove it. Now if it was just one location that they would go ahead and, and just do the lumpectomy. Um, so um, at that point I also wanted a second opinion as well. And I tried to, um, I'm trying to get a, an authorization to City of Hope, which I hope I'll have time to talk to you about tomorrow. Um, and um, she said, okay, well, let's go see another plastic surgeon. And she said that he could go un into the existing scar that I have when I originally had my plastic surgery, which I'll go ahead and show you now. It's really nothing. You can't even hardly see it. So I had mine done under here. And you can bar barely see a tiny, tiny scar under there. I don't think you can even see it really on the other one either. So um, she did a really good job. Um, so you can't really see it. So that's how I wanted them to do it, to go in underneath. And she said, yeah, that's, that, that's completely doable. Um, so we, um, I, made, I went to make another appointment and I was supposed to, I had to cancel my surgery and um, I was supposed to see him June, I think it was June 17th. And they called me and they said, okay, guess what? We have to change that appointment. So I went from June 17th to June 25th. And um, the whole time, yes, I was on the wait list. I would call in regularly to check if anything got uh, canceled or anything. And then they called me on June 17th or June 25th and or before June 25th and said, you know what, he's had an emergency. He's not gonna be able to make that appointment. And I said, I said, what do you mean he's had an emergency? They're like, yes, he's had a family emergency. I said, no, I fucking have a family emergency. I fucking have a family emergency. Do you know what a family emergency is? And he was like, I have kids at home. I take care of them. I have a fucking emergency and um, I couldn't even make my appointment but she said well as soon as we can squeeze you in it'll be July 30th. I said, July 30th. Oh my gosh. So now we're two months further along because it was June 9th so I'm figuring okay July 9th and then now July 30th and I doubt if I'll be able to get in in, in August at, at all. You know I was just like wow this is just ridiculous. So. Um, at that point, I couldn't. I was so upset I couldn't make the appointment, but I did call back later and make the appointment again. Because I have a very good friend of mine, Cindy Nelson, who works over at um, Lone Melinda, and she's amazing. Um, I actually worked with her at Weight Watchers for like eight years, so um, she's pretty cool and beautiful. So um, I just thought to myself, oh, geez, what am I, how am I going to do this? And I, I really need to have some kind of a plan because I just it just seems like I'm continually in limbo you know that the pieces aren't fitting together right so I call the lady Connie over at Loma Linda and I don't know what she, her title is but it's kind of like a case management thing you know she works with me on my plan and stuff and I asked her I said you know what what can I do what I mean is there another plastic surgeon I can go see or or how can I do this? And she's like, no, 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 you're just gonna have to wait. And I'm sitting there going, wow. I said, well, you know, does my doctor have, you know, somebody that's sitting in? Um, Cause she said that my doctor was actually gonna leave for, I guess, three weeks in July. So I was like, oh my gosh. So she gave me a number of a doctor and his name is Duncan Miles. And she told me that he is considered a community doctor. He does have privileges there at Loma Linda. Um, and so I should give them a call. So I called and they called me back right away. Next day they called me back. So um, when I uh, talked to the lady there, who's Tara, and she's amazing, and I told her my situation, she said, look, I can make you an appointment. I think it was around the 15th or the 17th of July. She said, but, um, she goes, I, I can't even believe that this is happening to you. She goes, I'm, I'm having a hard time even understanding this. She said, I, I may have a cancellation today. I have a mother and a daughter who are coming in, but I haven't heard back from them, and um, I'm not sure what's going on. She goes, are, would you possibly be available today? And I said, yeah, this is a priority for me. You know, So um, if you have that cancellation, that would be great. So um, she said, okay, well, um, just keep that time open. So we're talking like about 2 o'clock or something like that. So I was like, all right, definitely. So I'm thinking she's never going to call me. She calls me at two o'clock and says, can you get here in 15 minutes? So I like race over there. Now, somehow I just feel like 
maybe she did tell them that she needed to reschedule that appointment to see me. I can't say for sure. I just know, like, I heard that tone in her voice and um, everything, and I just, um, I don't know, I just I just have that feeling, you know, that she's that kind of a wonderful person. And um, so I went over there and I met them, and their whole team is just fabulous. Their office is fabulous. It's actually decorated in my two favorite colors, so for me that was kind of symbolic and stuff. Um, green which is you know the color of creation and thing all things new and then um the uh, plum kind of purplish color which is the color of the divine so i was really happy about that and um, i went in and they were so nice and my what i did find out is that he doesn't accept my insurance so they still agreed to see me which was awesome and um i was really worried about that but they said that we would figure it all out so um, sheesh, I gotta hurry up because I, I don't want to make it too long so you stop listening. So um, anyway, I finally did see the doctor and he's fabulous. Oh my gosh, he explained everything to me. I mean, he explained to me that like I thought that, you know, I knew my recovery time would be, you know, a lot longer than when I got just my boobs done, you know, the augmentation. However, what I... I didn't know is that I'm gonna actually have tubes draining from me for like three weeks. I did not know that. Um, so that was just, I'm glad he told me. I needed to know that. I'm thinking, you know, when the other doctor said, oh yeah, you'll be out for, you know, a couple of weeks or so, I'm thinking, well, if that's a couple of people, a couple of weeks for the average person, you know, forget it. I'm gonna be up and about in, I don't know, three, four days, right? Okay, so I'm gonna have tubes draining for three weeks, which doesn't mean that I won't be able to move out um, and I will take my tubes with me but you know I just I really wasn't really prepared for that and he also explained to me about the nipple sparing but let me go into the tissue which I started earlier he said that he could get some cadaver he would request that I have this one procedure where he gets cadaver tissue and he uses it between you know to, to reconstruct that to have a, a more natural feel and look um, and I was like, well, you better do like some exorcism or something on that stuff first because, you know, I don't want to be coming out like freaking serial killer or kleptomaniac or something because I've absorbed somebody else's DNA in my body. You know, I wake up and start talking in some different voice the next morning or something like that. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that's what he recommended. So um, I'm going to see how that goes. And then he also told me that oh, it kind of sucks. I kind of feel like something under my arm. I'm kind of paranoid that's going to go into my ducks well, what's going on here um he also told me that um uh my nipple he thought he, he would try to spare it and that what happens is you know when they basically go in there and gut it you know there there is really limited circulation so when he does the surgery if he looks and he sees that that's probably not going to be a good choice he could put an expander in there and he would leave the expander in there until you know i start healing more and then go back and put in the implant and he said that way, you know, like the implant is not pressing up against my my um, skin and restricting it even more. Um, so that kind of sounded like, I, I don't know, just it, it made sense, you know. Um, yeah, it, it made sense. So I thought that was really um, cool how he explained it. And he also explained to me that how if it's an estrogen-fed um, tumor, that um, he would want to maybe, he wants me to think about removing both of them. Um, I have to have both of the implants changed anyway, and they do it for symmetry also. But the thing is, is that um, I, I know that, you know, from a sexual point of view, that you can actually orgasm based on your nipples. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna lose one nipple and I, I'm, I'm not gonna have any, even if I keep like the, the nipple itself, just the, you know, for the cosmetics of it, I'm still not gonna have any sensation in it because there's there's nothing connected there, you know what I mean? So um, I was thinking about that and I thought, well then maybe I really would wanna keep the other nipple and the other boob, you know what I mean? Just replace the implant. Um, I, I mean, we're all sexual beings. We all wanna have sex, we all wanna have good sex and you know, that's a really important part of our of our lives and so um, 
that being said, um, I really want to take that into consideration. And also, you know, when I looked at a lot of the studies, when you're, if, it, if your cancer ever does spread, it's rare that it'll go over to the other breast. It might, you know, be displaced and, and, and show up again in another part of your body. So um, that's what I had read about it. Um, so if you guys have any experience with this, please let me know. There's that contact um, link on the website if you haven't been there. Um, you can hit me up on Facebook or, or whatever. Just send me a message. I, I try to talk to everybody. I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, but um, I'd really like to know what you guys think about that. Um, but he would do the scar underneath, and he's going to try to stave the nipples. And he also told me about, like, choosing implants. We talked about that, which we can talk about more on another podcast or another vlog. Um, but I have the teardrops right now. They're both going to be replaced. Um, and basically, in a nutshell, insurance doesn't pay for a lift. So when they would put the teardrops in, my nipple would be probably facing down. So he said, if I get like the high profile ones, which are, you know, a little fuller on the top, because see this boob, I don't know if you can tell, I'll have to work something you guys can tell, but one boob is, my right boob is um, like fuller up on top, um, because like the tumors are up here, and so it pushes up and it pushes the implant kind of, kind of upward, so I have like this built-in push-up bra on the right side. Anyway, um, so um, he said that I could use the high-profile ones and it'll provide like that fullness and stuff like that, which will pull the nipple up so that it's not facing downward and it will probably look really good. And he said that, you know, if I, he would be happy to go ahead and like adjust them later or do whatever he has to do afterwards to make sure that they look good. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to tell you about nipple sparing. Um, and talking about nipples. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about it because um, there's a guy that uh, I posted one of the links on my Facebook. I couldn't find it the other day though. His name is Vinnie Myers and he does um, the tattooing of the nipples. So if you guys get a chance, go ahead and um, look that up. I'll see if I can share it on YouTube too. It's quite amazing. There's so many things to think about when you're talking about nipples. I mean, they, they're talking about how you just have to watch a video, but they're talking about how, um, you know, if you have like a uni unilateral mastectomy and they don't spare the nipple, you've got to match the colors and stuff like that. And doctors only have very limited colors and they're not tattoo artists. They are just doctors. And um, there's a lady there that she's, she's beautiful and she has her nipples done and it shows it. And the story is wonderful. So I'll see if I can upload that too. So um, thank you for listening to my vlog. I don't want to take too long and um, just sending out good energy for anybody who's going through this with their family. If you have any questions, go ahead and send them to me, comments. If you want to send me pictures of your loved ones that are either going through it or, or whatever, um, I would just, I would love that. I would just love that. Um, there's so many of us and um, we just got to stick together and make it work. It's all good. So have a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining me and um, listening to my nipple sparing conversation. Talk to you soon. Oh, I remember people. There's nothing more important than people, and if we forget that, we're pretty much fucked. <laughs>